Sangbonani Makai and welcome to it. It's Monday Night Football, Lagu Soweto TV. Kamalamgu Kamzambata as I'm uh, here to make sure that we reflect on what's been happening in the past week or so as far as local football is concerned. As you know, some of our teams had to finalize their African adventure or the early stages thereof, namely Kaiser Chiefs and Bloom Celtic. will reflect on their results in a few moments' time and also look back on the weekend that was as far as the DSTV Premiership is concerned. As per usual, I have a panel, a star started one at that. Let me introduce them, starting out with Ryan Mufukeng, the uh, SABC commentator from SABC Sport. We have Shwe Walters, formerly of uh, Maritzburg United, goalkeeper who's here to judge other goalkeepers. Thank you, Shwe. <laughs> and uh, we have Mazola. <laughs> yeah, that's all you're here to do. That's all you're here to do. Is that, uh, if they ever see me in the street, I'm going to be like, Shwe said that. I yeah. just put it to we, him. We zo <laughs> we're zooming in on Richard Ofori today. Yes, <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Every, every weekend when I see a goalkeeper make a mistake, then I know, okay, now I'm on. I'm yeah, on, on Monday. Monday. <laughs> on Monday, I'm getting the shout. I'm getting the shout. And Mazala Mulef, uh, super journo uh, from uh, uh, Soka La Duma. Gentlemen, let's uh, maybe start with the news that broke today. And that's, of course, um, Ayanda Lemini deciding to relinquish, I, say, I can say, his duties of being head coach to go work in uh, the MDC structures of uh, the club. Um, and then obviously that elevates uh, Alan Fries to uh, the position of uh, temporary head coach. Not so I long. guess I want to know, <laughs> uh, as far as the bookies are concerned, if you're a betting man, Mazet, who would your money be for the next head coach of Usut? In the 18 area, Baba. In the 18 in area? In the 18 area. Ha. Look, look we, we, we got wind of the story, I think it's three weeks now, mm -hmm. um, that, you know, um, Sandi Lezungu, the new Amazulu owner, um, ambitious, very ambitious uh, businessman who's obviously applying that businessman, um, you know, knowledge yeah. into running this club with such a, a, a huge history. Um, thinking about a possible, you know, contemplating a possible change within the technical team and thinking that uh, Benny McCarthy, you know, being the name that, that sprung up, you know. Uh, obviously, there's been developments. I mean, just last week when they were unveiling Pagamani Matlambi yeah. and Veli Motwa, I asked the chairman, point blank, I said, chairman, we've had a story and we've written it that Benny McCarthy could be the next coach. your next coach, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, what's the, what's the status with Ayanda and that? And he looked me straight in the eye. And said, As I'm sure he's done in many business transactions. Exactly, and he said, <laughs> he said uh, we, are, we were fully behind our technical team. They've got, uh, you know, our support, mm, whatever, whatever. Mm. We'll back them, come hell or high water or whatever. And I've never spoken to Benny. Hmm. Today, they release a statement that Ayanda is stepping down. So, you know, but, but you, know, you know, we're used to it now. Football will kill you, a real death. No, we, for sure. We're for used sure. to it by now, you know. <laughs> Brian, I mean, looking at that with Benny coming in, uh, is, is he who they need? I mean, it kind of is in line with what Mazola says, the, the, the ambition of the club to say, okay, let's bring in someone who is a name and can kind of, you know, fulfill this project or get it off to a good start. I mean, if you look at the players they've signed, they've got a lot of uh, very experienced players mm. who are playing for the team now. Uh, it's no longer the same as they played last season, you know, during the bubble, the team they played in there. Mm. Got a different team now. This is now the situation has to be a better focal point as to how they want to be dealing with things going forward uh, from a team point of view. And I think Benny McCarthy, with the respect that he, he enjoys from, from a lot of players, will come in handy. He'll be mm. the, the coach that probably we're looking at. Alan Freeze also sitting there. I always thought about it, you know, mm. Alan Freeze's experience as then coach to Ayanda Zamini, I thought, this doesn't really seem to match up in a bit, you know, if right. you look at that. Uh, but I think Ayanda has worked with a lot of young players, so him going back to the development structures and also looking at the 2032 vision yeah. that they have, he'll come back a better coach going forward. And I believe that if he's given the support, proper support, and he does have a, uh, a better uh, head coach, so to speak, mm. he'll learn a lot going forward. And I guess, you know, the question is, Shweb, with the time that Benny has had from the game, you know, people will say, of course, he's been upskilling himself and getting better as a coach. Um, do you think it's high time now he comes back and shows what he's made of and gives it a sustained run? You know, you can carry on learning, but at some point you have to put all of that into practice. Mm. Yes, no, definitely. I mean, if you look at the time that uh, he started with, uh, I was there when he started off with Cape Town City, and you could see he was obviously a coach that had, had his ideas. Mm. And he was passionate about the game and um, it was obviously now just to put it into practice. There was obviously a lot of stumbling blocks at the time and there was a, a lot of, uh, you know, creases that he needed to iron out. 
And I think he has improved. I mean, the first season we were in the MTN8 final, we lost, and then the second season he won it. Mm. So he was progressing as a coach, he was pro progressing with his style that he wanted to implement. And that is why I think he's probably the best man for the job when it comes to Amazulu, because they've got similar personnel when it comes to um, a balance of experienced players and the right experienced players that they have now. I think in the past, Amazulu's experienced players were just maybe there for, for a pay, paycheck. But I mean, now the experienced players that they brought in has actually shown that they, you know, that they want to achieve things. Mm. And I think with a, a mentality, with a coach, with, a, with the likes of a coach of, of Benny, they, they could do extremely well. Okay, well, let's have a look at as far as their results are concerned, because obviously with Amazulu, you know, they're, they're aiming high this season. And uh, at the weekend, you know, getting a draw on the road, one can say, but, you know, some will say with the quality that we're supposed to have, maybe you bury a game like that, you know, maybe it's a different story where you go back to Durban with all three points. Um, is that how you see it? Yeah, look, you look at the results, they, they're not bad, they're yeah. not terrible, yeah. but if you're aiming for a top four finish, as, as, as the president of the club has, has set as a mandate for, for Coach Cobra, uh, and I think he's only won one game uh, yeah. out of the game that they've played so far, and having recruited the type of players that he's recruited, yeah. you'd expect... Uh, a better return than that, you know, and I think I think you know, it was always clear because I did when I asked the, the president this question last week. I said, "Look, Coach Cobra, you found him there essentially, yeah. you know, because yeah. you bought the, the 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 club from the Sokela family, and they had already given Coach Cobra, you know, a long term contract mm -hmm. after he saved them from relegation. Mm -hmm. You know, from from where they were sitting, it was only fair right. that they 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 promote him and they, they give him a chance, they yeah. give him a, an opportunity. But you've come in, you've got these lofty ambitions with." which the Sokela families had not set for Coach mm, Cobra. Mm. So it, I think it was inevitable that a, a, a change in the technical team was always going to come. And I don't think Coach Alan Fries is safe either. Mm, he right. was not their appointment, yeah, either, you know. Yeah. Um, and I think I foresee in the coming days, coming weeks, Some um, options. you know, more changes, yeah. you know, from, from the top, from head coach, down to, to, to obviously fitness trainer, mm. conditioning coach, goalkeeper coach. Yeah. You know, we've already, we, we ran a story last week that Monib Joseph was already being linked hmm. uh, for a reunion with Coach Benny, you know, because obviously they played together at Bafana, played together at Orlando Pirates. Yeah. And, and Shoaib will remember when Benny was at Cape Town City, he tried to get um, Monib to come be the goalkeeper coach there. John committees didn't quite agree, so yeah. it, it never happened. But they could finally, uh, uh, they, they, they could finally be a reunion there. So let's see. And I, I, I think in terms of yes, Benny's got his coaching badges or whatever. He's a big personality, big yeah. name. But I think he also, if you look at it from a marketing branding perspective, sure. which is exactly what Cape Town yeah, City did. Of, yeah. you know, they were launching and they said, who better to get than Benny McCarthy? Yeah, sure. And they came, when Benny came, the club just blew up, mm. especially in Cape Town. You know? So I think you know, with that in mind, they, they could pos possibly do that with Benny because Benny is just lovable. Everybody loves mm. Benny. You mm. Know? Mm. Bro? But also, if you look at uh, the, how they've played, we have to be honest, Amazulu well have, not, have not played badly. Yeah, this they season. haven't. I mean, the game they played now, the one they drew, mm. they could have won that game. No, and there's, for sure. a, there's a chance where, where, where I mean, against the last week game yeah. against Cape Town City, mm. the Mbuk could have converted that yeah. into a different story. Yeah, I mean, no, he, twice, he had that no. chance. Twice. Two weeks, he two weeks, chance, yeah. two weeks in a row yeah, where he sure. had a chance to really left here, but he never did, you know? Yeah. And I think if you look at a coach like Anders Lamine, a former striker himself, he knows exactly what's supposed to happen. Mm. And when, when, when Tempo missed those chances, you could see him literally saying, what must I do? Yeah, because exactly. we have done everything right. Memela so. has come up to, 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 to the party. Yeah. Uh, I believe Colum Lambo eventually will get there. Goodness. He's slowly moving in. Yeah. But I don't think he's at a level where he's supposed to be because he never played a lot of football. Right. You know? Uh, so Mulenga also has come in. So I believe the team they have, Shaba still hasn't started. Mm. You know, by the time they get Shaba in and all the new players they have and they have a right personality sitting on a bench, mm. that team will be a trouble for most teams. No, yeah. for sure. Let's talk about the debut of Veli Motta. What did you make of that? No, I think he had a, I think he had a phenomenal game. Mm. Uh, yeah, I, I don't want to be too critical because as much as, you know, uh, <laughs> as much as... You are here to be critical, Walters. You yeah. are here to be critical. You are a goalkeeper, man. Let's talk, let's hear. <laughs> Look, yes, it was a great strike from, from Manzini. But that is your side. I mean, I've seen goalkeepers literally stand one meter away from their goal because the wall's covering the opposite side. Mm. There's no way you need to be... In, I mean, if you look at it in slow motion, you can yeah. see it takes one, two steps forward, but it's actually moving to the middle of the goals. Mm. You don't. The wall blocks that whole side. Right. You only have 
one meter from your goals, maybe one and a half meters. So it's, uh, you're one and a half meters from this post. Right. And that is the, the, the angle that you block. And that's exactly where the ball went. Mm. So I can be critical with that. But all Coming honesty, new team. new team, he's made some brilliant saves mm. in that game. I think he mm. made about three or four good saves. There was one for Eda. Um, yeah. He was on a shot in the near post. Mm. So I think he stated his claim, and um, I think um, Mbata is obviously going to have some stiff competition, in trouble, sure, yeah. which we were He's, discussing, which I think is good. Mm. Um, and and just coming back with with yeah with what you guys are saying, it's when you look at Zungu signing Shabalala as a status, now sure. you're getting him signing Benny as well sure. as a personality. Sure, it's good for the club, and and I think that yes, I even think that ben, um, Munib might come in as assistant coach. Huh. And they keep the goalkeeper coach yeah. because Munib did that uh, in the bubble. For sure. Yeah. So And he knows the players. Yeah. And he, yeah. He's in um, the, the one where he had the team talk. Yes. Uh, inspired so the players. So he's still that kind of so he, Yeah, so yeah. he can be the link. So I even see him as the assistant yeah. coach. Hmm. To, to that is in. an interesting consideration yeah. to make as well. And especially let's look at, you know, in terms of their opponents. This big story breaking out now about... Um, Selo Chok, we're being investigated yeah. for financial mismanagement, shall yeah. we call it? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> when did this break? And, you know, how, I know there was smoke, you know, um, because there's a fire somewhere. But yeah. how, how hectic is the story? Yeah, so look, we, we got the charge sheet um, on Saturday morning. Hmm. Um, you know, fraud allegations of, you know, obviously embezzling money, fake invoices and, what, and, 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 and whatever. So those are the charges that he's essentially embezzled the family trust, which obviously bought the status of TTM hmm. from between last year sometime up until now to an amounting to about $2 million. Hmm. Um, So his disciplinary, internal disciplinary hearing takes place on the 11th of December. Okay. And, you know, you know um, the CEO says he will defend himself accordingly. You know, so, so let's see. You know, some might say smear campaign. Some might say smoke where there's fire, you know. I've not, I've not seen the, the evidence of the things that they're accusing him mm. of, but I've seen the charge sheet, mm. which has been prepared by the club, and, uh, you know, he's been served with that no notice, which the, the, the CEO acknowledged, uh, and then, then proceeded to say he will defend himself. Just a matter of time. Let's see how it plays out. But, you know, these things never end well. You yeah. know, that's, it's, it's often very much, um, you know, the, 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 the end of the road, sure. you know, especially because, I mean, if you think about it, the club has been in the news for all That's the, what I was thinking, is that as, the as a CEO, then, you're not helping the cause. Yeah, and then as a CEO, the you're light. being charged with, 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 with fraud and, you know, embezzlement and whatever. So, she's you know, it's, um, it's, 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 it's huge. It's a, it's a big story that broke over the weekend and obviously hogged the, the headlines mm. ahead mm. of, of them playing playing Amazulu, so you know they, they they tried by covering that up with trying to get a, a decent result, mm. but you know again it's TTM. I saw headlines every every day almost that sure. TTM are at it again. So let's see how it plays out. But as I said earlier, these things you know once it gets to that point, there's it only there's only one way conclusion. Easily, yeah, and yeah, I mean it's yeah. a strange one, gents, because we always speak about how TTM just need to sort out that part of things, the admin side of things. And, you know, because on the pitch, they don't look a bad outfit. They just need the whole club to kind of be pulling in the same direction. You know, one thing that, that, that we, we, we don't talk about a lot is I understand that the gap between the Africa Championship and the Premier Division, mm. there's not much. Because mm. when you look at the way they yeah. play, it's almost similar. Right. But the administration part, yes. there's this huge gap. Chalk and cheese. You know, if you look at the way teams behave at, at the Clare Africa Championship, uh, most of them just made a leap from playing in the ABC Mutsepe League and getting to the Jet Africa Championship. And like TTM, they never won the league. Mm. They eventually just got promoted mm. into the Premier Division, you know, by virtue of buying a status. So there's still that stuff they never sorted out. Right. Because it all started during play, when they're still playing the Jet Africa Championship, them celebrating victories of other teams. Some said it was sportsmanship-like and all of that. Mm. And then releasing statements, uh, nearly wheeling in the middle of nowhere mm. of certain things. Those have continued to follow them. Yeah. And the CEO has always been there. You know, Silo Shoke has always been there. He's always been part of the setup. Yeah. When there were issues about players not getting paid, he was there, you know, defending the team. There was always those things that were coming up one after the other. And when you get now to this level of playing the Premier Division, they find themselves exposed because mm. those small things, those finer details, mm. other teams are dealing with differently. Right. And now you find yourself exposed to those and 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 a chairperson that trust and all of those things that comes in. You know, football is a game of trust. If, if, if you're a part yeah. of my setup, mm. you're a CEO especially, and there's the trust issue there, yeah. then it's always going to be a problem going forward. Yeah, and I'm sure, how does that work on the players' minds when your CEO is the person who's 
causing the disruption when US players already are hearing there's this air of might we get paid at this club, you know, and then you hear things filtering down whilst you guys are trying to get traction and good performances under your belt. That is where, for me, is that you have to give credit to all the players. I mean, mm. if you look at the way the players played, yeah. they played their hearts out. Mm. And uh, I'm not saying I'm surprised, I just like the professionalism of the players. Mm. It's going to eventually filter down. Yeah. Sure. Because, yes, I can do it for one month, or but I mean, come month number two, then the players are going to be saying, no, you know what, now. Yeah. Or, yes, ex yes, this administration issues or that, it's going to filter through. Mm. So for now, it's still, an, it's still a relatively new thing when it comes to TTM and the players. Yeah. But eventually, the players are also going to say, you know what, no, man, we, 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 something has to be done here. Sure. And, um, yeah, that's why I say, I, for, for me, is the most important things. I have to give credit to the players for the display yeah. over the weekend. Yeah. Um, that was phenomenal. Um, and whoever's the senior team players there and the, the captains, they're doing a good job with holding it. But you're not going to hold it for long. Um, like Brian is saying, eventually it's going to fall through. Okay, well, there you have it. It's a similar, almost akin situation where we always knew of uh, Bloom Celtic and how their players had to deal with things that were happening up above them and it galvanized them. Could we see something similar with TTM as they go on a run to prove all the naysayers wrong, including some people in the studio here? Yeah. We're going to take a short little break. We'll be back after this. <laughs> Welcome back. It is Monday night, uh, football on Soweto TV as we go back to the weekend and reflect on a game that happened down uh, in the Cape as far as uh, two teams who, when they meet, it is usually a good encounter. Four goals were scored in total. I guess, uh, you know, we spoke about how for Orlando Pirates, if they're trying to put together a winning run this season, some may say these are the kind of games you need to win, but I figure these are the ones where you have to kind of show your character. You might not win the game per se, but at least you'll kind of show that you have the credentials. Did you see that from Orlando Pirates this weekend, or was it still more kind of trying to find their feet, bumbling, you know, because that first goal, uh, you know, you, you have a situation where it's going past Tyson and Ofori. The two players brought in to kind of help shore up <laughs> the defense kind of bends past both of them. I thought it was a time when he was going to come in. But <laughs> no, 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 no. That's why I brought Tyson into the conversation so that you can take this one. <laughs> you know, there's something that I've realized at Pirates. You know, when, when, you brought in, when they brought in Tyson, mm. I thought that was to sort out the problem they had. You know, where you had Happy Jale and, and Nyawuza sometimes yeah. things, something was not working out. Right. But I've tried a new combination. I realized that the goals are leaking more in that particular central position mm. where the goals have been scored. But don't take anything away from Danzani's goal. No, it was a beautiful goal. goal. The way yeah, he took sure. it was, was, I mean, he took it so, so well for sure. that he could have beaten any goalkeeper at any given time. But the position of a goalkeeper also, he was unsighted because the two players standing in front of him, none of them were challenging the man who had the ball. Yeah. Hans was able to lob the ball and put the ball into the back of the net. Uh, for me, I believe that Pirates, are, uh, they're going the right direction as to what they need to do in their defense. Mm. You know, uh, Tyson is new. Can they try another combination? Mm. But do they, have, do, do they have the time to do that? Because they're already thinking Confederations Cup is coming up in a sure. bit, you know? Um, for me, they allowed Cape Town City too much space. You know, Notata and Mokeke did well in the middle of a park right. to nullify uh, um, the Motuari as well as Munari. Hence, Munari was eventually pulled out, mm. you know. Mm. So it meant that every time they had the ball, the ball, uh, Dantani was free running forward. They also had Akum running forward. So it was always that situation where they are always caught. They always caught Tenny mm. trying to run back to goals. Continuous, continuous. Hence, they considered a goal. Whether they could have won that game on Saturday, I think the way they pressed towards the end of the match was yeah. better. They could have scored the goals, but Cape Town City was slightly better. They made a mistake by pulling on Danzani. For him, Danzani should have stayed yeah. and played the 90 minutes. He likes scoring against Paris. Mm. Would have actually given them more. Hmm. Okay, well, as far as that trident is concerned up front of, you've got Bule, you've got Hotto, and you've got Lipasa. I mean, Lipasa was quite the provider at the weekend, you yeah. know, the kind of the passes he was playing, it was almost they were saying, you know what, there's too much heat on you now, let's try to switch things around and make Dion the main man. I, I found that worked quite well, and maybe against a lesser team, you would have seen a bigger kind of result, whereas maybe they shrunk into themselves against the Cape Town City side that are strong. Yeah, look, I mean, Pule, Pule has been getting the goals of mm. late. Mm. Um, Dion's blowing hot and cold. Hot or and cold, that's what yeah. you <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, You know, and then there's Lepasa, who I quite like. Yeah. His work rate yeah. is phenomenal but he's not scoring the goals. And as a striker, that's how you judged. Mm. So eventually you're going to have a situation where uh, Gaba 
you know, automatically comes back on. And then obviously they've got Makusu, the, the, the DRC striker who's on loan, who everybody's anxious to see what right. he can offer, yeah. you know. Obviously, it, it, it'd probably be a while before we actually see him because I don't think they'll risk playing him in the cup final when, unless the coach feels he's ready. But, right. you know, for me, Lepasa is probably one you need to perhaps pair with together with Mango. He does the hard running and then just feeds off to, to Mango to finish. But bear in mind, Mango also coming off a, a, a longish... Uh, injury layoff, but I, I think the, there has to be some question marks on Dion, you mm. know, because for for the type of player that he is, you know, uh, obviously he's an assist king, mm. you know, we know from his days at Bidvis Vits, so maybe there's there has to be a bit of a you know goal output uh, moving 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 forward, especially if your number nine is, is not is not doing the job. Mm. So let's see how it goes. Still early days, yeah. uh, but they've I mean that Barocca uh, draw, I think that's a killer. You 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 think. Fair enough, they went away to Cape Town City where they, I think they've not, they've not won there in six years, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. So you, you understand they go there and they're not able to get a win. Good, good, solid point, I think, especially, you know, given the, how good the goals were taken. Yeah. But it goes back to that Barocca draw in their own backyard where also some of the tactics and the, the, the lineup, mm. maybe some question marks there. I think that's a game that the coach should have gone three points having in mind that I've got an even tougher game away at Cape Town City. So, but yeah. you just never know, yeah. For, for me, I think, just to add on to what, what Mazwala is saying, mm -hmm. if, you, if you look at the way Hoto has been played at Pirates, I think that's where the problem is. Okay. When Hoto goes wider, he's able to provide the assist you're talking about. But at Pirates, he's tucked in slightly inside. He's yeah. more inside, mm -hmm. and you had, uh, you, 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 you had a Makaringe going wider, yeah. and Lepasa coming in. Hence, he was able to find himself one on the goalkeeper. I mean, the first five minutes of the game, yeah. one on one the goalkeeper, something yeah. Hotto doesn't actually have. Yeah. You know, he, was, he found himself in a penalty. The ball was spread towards him uh, by, by Lepasa. Couldn't find the back of the net. Yeah. He had another one later on. I think for me also, something we don't talk about a lot, even on Saturday, I feel Lewenberg should have gotten men of the match. Yeah. I think he gave a standing performance solid, on the yeah. show. Yeah. He was solid. He denied Le Passa, he denied everybody, in mm. fact, in, in the Paris mm. attack mm. to find the back on the two goals they scored, they could do nothing about it. Because sure. there's always always gonna be a problem. But I believe that Paris could have scored more goals. Lewenberg was just a better player on the day. He was always on top of his game. And you know, they always say that those, those hoodie teams. And Cape Town City has proven to be one of those. One of them, yeah. Well, let's speak about the, the team that's got the the the, the Good results as far as they weren't the more favoured side. Yes, they were the home side, Shui, but you know, everyone thought Pirates will come in and maybe pick up three points. But it's credit to the coach, uh, Jan Older Rickering. They're sitting fifth on the table. They're able to show up and be a, a good force in these games. You know, they're not getting overridden by teams. Um, they're holding their own. And we spoke about the bubble and the cont continuity of what we're seeing now. What do you think the mandate there is? What, what, what can he do? What's he charged with? No, I think his mandate is definitely in the top four. And I think hmm. they've got the personnel to do it. Yeah. I, I really don't believe anybody when they said, yes, Pirates is going to go there and expect to get the three points. Because we're going to go to Cape Town. Pirates has always struggled there, first yeah. of all. Mm. Cape Town City always loves their game when they play against the top three teams. Right. And um, I, I, I wasn't surprised when, when Cape Town City scored first. I mean, I did a podcast last week and I predicted a win for Cape Town City. Mm. And I felt they could have, mm. thanks to Peter uh, Leuvenberg, and um, they, they should have actually won it. But you could pick up that they were going to concede again. And they just, they're just struggling to, to kill games off. Yes, mm. you can absorb a certain amount of pressure, but I don't feel <laughs> that um, slowing games down, because you can see they're inviting pressure. Mm. And that is, I think, the problem that they're having at the moment. Look, they're a good team going forward. They're comfortable on the ball. They're passing quite well. It was a new stadium that they played at, the Danny Craven. The field's obviously a lot smaller, so it also was a bit of a disadvantage for Pirates, because Pirates like their width. Mm. They, like, they like bigger pictures, yeah. because, they, pictures because they've, they've got speed. Yeah. And, um, yeah, I think, I think they came and they did well with creating chances, but we all know that the Pirates are still looking vulnerable yeah. at the back. Okay, well, let's have a look at as far as the other results from the weekend. And the big one, as far as Barocca were concerned, they came back um, to win courtesy of two set pieces. Something that Lutron Olosiema was saying after that game that, listen, man, this is something I've been telling these guys, that the set pieces are going to be un our undoing. And essentially, that's what it was. And Coach Toka, you know, breaking a bit of a hoodoo there. It's been since like 2017, they've been able to beat um, Chiba United. So he's proving the critics uh, wrong. <laughs> Mazzola, wouldn't oh, you say? That, that, oh, that's what you meant, Dre says. <laughs> <laughs> eh, no. Ah. 
<laughs> no, I don't think winning one game is proving the critics wrong. You know, let's see the, the full marathon, um, you know. But but anyway, I mean, good good for, for, for Coach Matsimela. Um, but, you know, worries for Coach Lichon Olosiema mm -hmm. because, geez, we know we know the chairman, you know, trigger happy. You can you can be shafted at any moment, mm. you know, um, and it's important for you to start getting. And Chipa haven't started well, you know. They've just lost their captain and goalkeeper to Amazulu recently, mm. so there are question marks about the goalkeeping department as well. Okay, they've got the two players from Mamelodi Sundowns, but when are they gonna blood in? And you know, I think the priority for me, and I'm saying off air to Shoaib that when Veli Moto was sold on mm. Saturday morning. Mm. The chairman should have immediately rung Sundowns and asked for a Jody February or Riyad Peters or anybody to sure. phone for a goalkeeper sure. instead of just take, taking his reserve and just making him number one goalkeeper. Right. You go into, they are going to be errors and they are going to be costly. You still need that competition. Exactly. Yeah. And they are going to cost uh, Lechon Olasiema his job at the end of the day. So, look, let's see how it goes. Still early days, but... It's never too early for, for, for a cheaper United coach. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, Brian, do you think maybe there's an understanding that, you know, we're rebuilding here? I know other coaches have been there during a rebuild, but, you know, there were so many guilt edge chances that, other than the coach being on the pitch himself and yeah. scoring them, there was nothing you could do. You could see the phases of play. You could see it's just that final third and being able to finalise and, and, and get the ball into the back of the net. I think the difference between the two teams is simple. Mm. The Sonola Sierra got the what, late last season, to be part of the Chippa United team. Yeah. Matimele has been there forever. So he understands the players that are coming up. All the players that have been brought into by Roca, mm. he knows each and every one of those players mm. because they either played at a youth level or they played in a tournament in the right. township uh, where they're coming from Burgers Fort or wherever, but he knows those players individually. He mm. knows each and every one of them, mm. you know? And they're always, Barocco is up their game when they're playing against the, the supposed three, top three, the sure, big three, sure. Chiefs, Pirates, and Sundowns. And something they're doing well this season, which is going to help them going forward, is that they're winning matches against the supposedly smaller teams, mm. which is what they've always never done. They've always tried and went and gone for the big guns mm. and struggled to get the results. Mm. And, you know, for, for the Toronto CM, I have to say, you know, um, it's always that thing. When, 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 when you're thinking cheaper United and thinking a coach signing, you're saying, Hmm, that's, is, is it really planning on going there and staying yeah. there? Do you unpack? Yeah. Or you just literally go with a suitcase yeah. and say, when things don't work out, I just pack and go back home? Right. Uh, you know, so I just hope that this time around, the coach, you know, will prove us, or they, they, the boss will prove us different, will prove us all wrong to mm. say, you know what? This is the man for the job, and I know what he's doing. He's brought in a lot of players from Bluefontein, mm. who we used to work with, mm. to Chippa United. So imagine if he leaves, what's going to happen to those players? Yeah. A new sure. coach coming in, for sure. players will be thinking, maybe we should have stayed at Celtic. Mm. With their problems, we're better off there, we're loved, everything was better, sure. the coach leaves, it's a problem. Shwebe, on the other side, you have a coach in Coach Toka who obviously, you know, some coaches may not be able to see that, you know, let me shut up shop. He did it in a way that was a bit controversial because he had brought on Afonso, then he took him off to almost secure the result. Mm. So at one place, you have to look at it and say kudos to him for maintaining the three points because that's what he was looking to do. But psychologically, what does that do to the player or do you think he understands that there's a greater good at play here? Yeah, I think... Uh, for... If it was you, <laughs> how would you look at it? If it, if it was you. Know, you. <laughs> at that time, I would, I would probably tell the coach, you know, I understand. Yeah. But in the back of my mind, I'm going to think to myself, this. There's another way you could have done it. Though, right. Another way you could have closed up shop. Sure. Tell me to go be the <laughs> yes. defender. Yeah. Tell me to go defend. But you know, each each one for his own. Mm -hmm. He's got his his method to madness, mm -hmm. if you want to call it that. And we, you know, like you said, kudos to him. Uh, and it worked for him this time. I mean, had they conceded two goals in the last nine minutes, then it would have backfired. Right. So I think it was for me personally. I think it was a lot of luck with what happened um, with, the, with the decision making and, and the strategy behind, behind uh, putting on a player and then taking off Afonso again. So, yeah, when it comes, uh, you know, Siema, I, I, I don't think um, Chopa himself is going, to, he's, he's going to fire Siema because of the results, because I think he, he knows he's going to lose a lot more here. Mm. Uh, he's going to dig himself a bigger hole mm. uh, with the team himself. Right. So I think he needs to give Siema now, obviously, the confidence, because you already to a certain degree, crippled him. You're right? saying Chipa is not going to fire a coach. No, I don't think he's going to fire <laughs> him huh? yeah. anytime soon. Because it's not a, a situation of his own making, in a sense. Exactly. And also, he was the one that 
semi crippled the team by 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 selling the captain mm. and yeah. you know the the so I mean, me as a coach, I'm going to tell you, but you're the one. Yeah. I, I, I obviously didn't want that exactly. because my job is on the line. Yes. I can't go and tell you, sell my best, one of my best players, my captain, mm, and cripple yeah. my team. Fair enough. And then you're you understand. You're going to blame it on me. Yeah. Yeah, and then you're going to blame it on me. Yeah. No. I mean, Doesn't everybody now, even, even a blind man can but see But you that. say it's your job to get the best out of that second <laughs> chip. But I didn't. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, but I mean, Slippery yeah, slope. <laughs> yeah. Slippery slope. Slippery slope. Jens, we're going to take a short little break. After which, we are going to return and look at uh, what happened as far as uh, sundowns are concerned at the weekend and maybe there's a curse that's happening because both the player of the month and the coach of the month only managed to draw at the weekend. We'll look into that after we, as we continue after the break on Monday Night Football. Welcome back. We're on the home straight as far as Monday Night Football is concerned here on Soweto TV. Looking back at the weekend, Mamelodi Sundowns helped donate, I guess, what is the first point of the campaign to Maritzburg United. Trey Walters will take issue with that because I'm sure to you, you earned <laughs> the point, your team. Um, but, you know, I mean, looking at that, Ernst Middendorp guys now is off the mark. Um, he's back uh, in, in familiar surroundings. But at the same time, you had a, a Sundowns team there. You know, Shalulile had a guilt edge chance to maybe wrap things up um, with all the talent that they had. Maritzburg can, I guess, take some heart from a performance like that at the weekend, Brian. Yes, indeed. I mean, I, I, I believe Maritzburg United getting a point. Yeah, they're the only team without a point, by the way. Yeah. So no, finally, sure. everybody at least has a point. Has a point. <laughs> so you can now all sit down and say, at least every team has collected. At least a point in the But not everyone's in double digits. Yeah, that's, that's what you're trying to go to. That's... You know, I mean, if, if you look at... I remember when Enz was actually uh, brought back to Murray's back. I had a Which time? No, no. <laughs> this time. This time. When yeah, he was brought time. back now. Okay. Um, uh, I had a chat with uh, one of the guys from Murray's back United. And I said to them, but has any been here before? And has any walked away uh, in the middle of a season? And he said, you know... Uh, we know what he's going to be able to do for us. Right. We, we know he's a good coach. We know that the team needs a coach like him now. Um, hence, we let go of Eric Tinkler because we believe he needed a coach like him so we're able to get the best out of the players. Most of the players that are there, some of the players that are there, that he worked with before, you know, so you know those players. Right. And at the moment, the players need a leader. They need a coach that's going to be able to lead these players and try to really put them in shape. And mm. he's the man to do the job. And, and you know... Uh, the fact that they've got a draw in his first game sitting mm -hmm. on the bench because the previous one he was on the, was stand, on the bench yeah. was on the stand. So the fact that they've got a point with him sitting there, Edward will say, maybe, maybe he's the right guy, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. But I believe that like you were talking about Sundown, Sundown should have wrapped up that game. They had plenty of chances to find the back of the net. Mm -hmm. They just couldn't convey their chances. Yeah. Marisbeck United towards the end also Kutumel had a few chances of his own mm -hmm. when Tulan eventually was brought onto the field of play. You could see that at least there's something they're doing, you mm -hmm. know? Uh, but Sundowns for me, I think so much respect out of Sundowns to win that game. That that's, that's what happened. They just were too anxious when they got there. They mm. just never did what they, what they did in the previous matches where when they got to the last third, they slowed down a bit mm. and laid the ball in. Um, and Kevin Tirasma's role is different at Sundowns. Uh, Shadulila could have scored a few goals himself. Mm. You know, so, yeah, we'll see what will happen. You know? uh, for the first time, I saw my community losing it on the bench. <laughs> and eventually, Sean Red and Steve yes. Compella to come forward and we're going to try and calm things down. Steve also was getting frustrated. We were screaming at the referee, screaming at everybody else. So, you know, I was saying, Pizzo, in an in, in, in interview that he had with Savja, he was saying that I left Sundowns in a better position than ever. Mm, yeah. So these coaches know <laughs> that they cannot not, not, you know, they can't just fall apart because they've been rated the same squad mm. within better players. For yeah. sure, yeah. for sure. So, so there's so much pressure. It added to what already was a strong, strong S squad. So much pressure. No, for sure. Um, and Shweb, I mean, looking at that, we speak about Twemba Zwani getting on the score sheet. People will look at that and say, yes, he's being consistent as far as his scoring is concerned. And almost, you know, only four goals away, maybe from double digits so early on in the season. But... Whilst that is the positive, what do you think or what, which Sundowns team pitched up on the weekend for you and why was it not a, a three-point um, crusade for them? I think you, you also have to give a lot of credit to, to Maritzburg and the way they defended. I mm, mean, yeah. There was a lot more structure. Even the game against Supersport, you could sure. see there was a little bit of glimpse. They, there's a lot of them that's coming to the party now. I mean, I've never seen Ke uh, Keegan Buchanan defend the way he's defending now. He's mm. fighting for balls. Mm. He's even got a yellow card. Mm. Okay, this is on his fourth yellow card. I think he's suspended for the next game. Yeah. But he's got a lot of fight. Dalen Clarkson himself also. 
So there's a lot of energy coming from, and that's what frustrated um, Sundowns to a certain degree. And they, they, Barrettsburg has a game plan. Mm -hmm. As much as Sundowns is a good team and they always expect it to win, you must also look at the congestion of the of, of, of the players also, and the amount of games that they play, the amount of minutes, and not a not a lot of a lot of changes they make in yeah. in, their, in their squad and yeah. in, I mean in their first eleven. Sure. Yeah. So you you're gonna get tired legs at time. I mean Lila Kay was exposed quite a bit because he was going forward, but he couldn't. Mm. You know his recovery wasn't mm. that well. Um, Morena as well. Yeah. So f for me, as as much as Sundowns is expected to win, uh, even Liverpool at times are picking mm. up a lot of injuries and the fitness. So it can happen to Sundowns as well. They they're not invincible. Of sense. course, but I mean, on that note, they've got such a large squad. Why not refresh things and keep things interesting, bring in players that can make things happen? Yeah, I think, look, one, I think it's maybe early days to start with the rotation. I think once they start playing in the first round of, of the Champions League and then, you know, hopefully progress to the group stages, then I think you'll see a lot more rotation. Because in, even, even in his eight years at Sundowns, Peter was never one for rotation. Right. You'd see... He'd go play a group stage match against Weydad or whoever, you know, uh, USMA, mm. and then come back and he's made two changes to the team that traveled to North Africa. Right. Know? So, you know, I think, you know, Coach Mangoba and, and Coach Rulani have adopted the same mentality that mm. if, if it ain't broke, don't, you know, if, hmm? yes, if it, if it, don't, it ain't broke, don't, don't fix, fix it. That's <laughs> the one. <laughs> hey, <Sukhua. laughs> <laughs> but uh, but the, the, the thing is, once they start play, because closer to Christmas, they, they play their first um, game in, 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 in the Champions League. Then yeah. if they win that, they go into the group stages, then you know. Obviously now there's no telecom knockout, mm. so they they you know at least the season's shortened a little bit. It's not so heavy. Right. Still a lot of games. Yes. I mean, so I think Sundowns were averaging fifty odd games a season with mm. the telecom cup included. So right. you take away the telecom, I think you only really take if they four. get to the final, you're yeah, only taking four. away four games. So yeah. it's not a lot in the yeah. bigger picture, right. you know. Um, so they but so they're going to. I mean, I think they've registered. Um, you know, 30 plus players for the Champions League, mm. and they are trying to ask. They've asked the league to move the transfer window um, to uh, to an earlier date instead of the first of February, so that they can be able to sign a few more players mm. uh, and then be able to register them in the Champions League as well. So that tells you that their mindset is looking ahead. So for me, it's too early for Sundowns to start with the rotation. You were only six games into the season, so what are you rotating for? Mm. Guys are not that tired, but I think the main issue is the whole, you know, the element of COVID, the uncertain times that we're in. Hence, the league still has that rule of five substitutes, you know, and I think that's where, you know, some teams mm. don't have the advantage in that towards the, the, the latter part of the game, then you're making so many changes and then the energy levels drop or the intensity is not the same because yeah. it's not necessarily like for like. You're just trying to spare players. So let's see how it goes. But having said that, I have to give credit to Ernst. You mm -hmm. know that the first thing he's going to do is bring structure. That's sure. what he did when he came to Kaiser Chiefs and Solinas had completely you know, messed, messed that team up. Sure. The first thing Ernst did is solidify, give them structure, and they were better defensively, which is what, you know, look, Meredith were not conceding too many goals, yeah. uh, but they just didn't, they've, they had lost the structure somehow, which surprisingly, it was surprising because Eric is quite structured. Right. You know, you know how his team is set up, uh, but I think maybe things were just un unraveling. That maybe it was in response to him. You know? <laughs> the lack of structure. The lack of structure. Maybe. You maybe. Know? So, yeah, let's see. But I think, my opinion, Sundowns should walk the league every single season with the type of players that they There's no excuse whatsoever. Well, there you go. Uh, that's going to draw a lot of interesting responses when we chop that one down ah. and uh, spread it throughout the week. We're going to take a short oh, little break <laughs> of the witch. We discuss Kaiser Chiefs and Bloom Celtic as we look ahead to their final encounter, of course, of the weekend against the London Pirates. Join us after this. Welcome back. It's uh, Monday Night Football here on Soweto TV. Mic check, mic check. Okay, we're all sorted. That's why I'm using this one. Let's go now and uh, congratulate, I guess, Coach uh, Brandon Trutter and uh, Temba Zwane, the two teams at the top of the table, each giving us a candidate for Coach of the Month and Player of the Month. Now, Brian, you were involved in the voting for this. Um, just kind of, you know, maybe take us through your thought process when it came to these two gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> I think I, I, I think you know when 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 we looked at the uh, play of the month. Let's mm -hmm. start with the play of the month yes. first of all. I believe that uh, we had 
Njabulu uh, Ngobo uh, from, from, from Swallows. From Swallows, yeah. I think he has done very well in the defense. He's been the only consistent player in that entire back, back five of right. Swallows who, since they, they got into the Premier Division. And uh, he was one of the favorites as well as far as winning this. We have Peter Shalulile and we also had uh, Temba Zwani. Right. So we're literally torn between Temba Zwani and Peter Shalulile because Shalulile, if you look at his assist, mm. you know, sometimes has not been <laughs> assist, mm. direct assist, but a second assist. Right. Playing the ball to what, I mean, the way he released Temba Zwani, the ball was played for by Kel Tukemet Erasmus, eventually resulting in Zwani scoring the goal. I believe if you look at that point, the way he has been, um, you know, he has changed his game, mm. more than the scoring guy, mm. to be the supplier. Um, you know, he was always the favorite. He was always there. It was always going to be between him and Zwani. Mm -hmm. They were quite very close, neck to neck, mm. uh, towards the end. It went to Zwani because it is not always where you see a player wins football of the season, coming back to do well at right. the start of the season, especially. But it's the new the season, season right? So I'm just playing devil's advocate. Yeah. So but new I'm, season. Why are you taking that into no, but consideration? I'm saying, no, but I'm saying. <laughs> but I'm saying when you, when, when, when you look at his performance, yeah. You know, he's picked up a left off. Okay. And he's been consistent. He's been playing very well. Right. He's getting those right positions, scoring goals continuously. And he's been the player. Nobody watches him a lot. You know, they're always looking at Shalulile and Kemet Erasmus. He's able to run around and get himself in good positions and find the back of the net. So he eventually went with him. When he came to Brendan Truter mm. up against the uh, three musketeers. This is the hot one on Twitter you know, today. Be, 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 uh, against the three musketeers. Yeah. Uh, the biggest issue was you have... You know, you have, you have the three coaches at Sundowns who are sitting there on the bench yeah. with the sort of squad they have, yeah. Sundowns. You know, the Mazzolo, results have to Mazzolo follow. was talking about the result yeah. and the fact that they have been part of the team before, bar Steve Compeller. Mm. You know, they've been part of the team and have done very well. Mm. But you look at Brendan Truter. He comes with a team that is mostly dominated by has-beens hmm. as far as South African football is concerned. Mm. Because people want to say, but... Uh, Vui has been given a chance. Mukwen has been given a chance. How he was able to transform those players into a team that is challenging for everything now? Right. Team has really been able to come out and fight very hard and be able to go out there and showcase, infusing the newer players, the slightly younger players, mm -hmm. your nobles into the team. Mm -hmm. I mean, the fact that they didn't want to give uh, Chiefs Mutibe, uh, what is it, uh, Kobedi? Kobe. They didn't mm -hmm. want to give Mutibe back to Chiefs yeah. because he's a key player for the team, you know? Lewa Mukwena has become a captain of the team, he's really becoming a leader. Mm -hmm. So the way they've changed things around the Swallows, I think that was where the argument was always going to be said to say, do you go with the three gentlemen who have done very well for Sundown, they're sitting on top? Yeah. Or do you go with a team that has some stage been number one, but always been offset by Sundowns because of the performance they would play after them? Right. You know? Right. And eventually we settled for Truta for, the, for, for, for those simple reasons that with the squad that Sundowns has, yeah. it is given. We always want, we always expect them to win. But aren't they consistently winning? Sorry, they are. total logic. I, I no, need I'm to saying, hit you with these ones. They, they, they're going to come for you. They are. Total logic. But, but, but if you look at the TTM game. Yeah. For me, the, that was the biggest talking point to say, when they played against TTM, mm. a team that is having all these issues that are heavy, they couldn't get a win against TTM. Okay. That's a bit harsh, but Fair okay. But I'm saying, that's one of the situations you talk about. Yeah. Let's look at the game against where they eventually won 4-3 against Amazulu. Yeah. They were just leaking goals. Amazulu could have won the game. Right. You know, Amazulu had them at some stage to actually win. If they, Temba didn't score the hat-trick. We were talking a totally different story because they were leading at some stage and Amazulu came back stronger. Yeah. And Amazulu could have scored three, four goals themselves after that. You know, there was one of those where Majora could have just tapped in, he missed that particular chance. Yeah. So there were a lot of those and there's been a lot of question marks around the defense, the way things are playing. You know, uh, Thompo has not been a regular player now. He comes in, uh, comes in, plays a bit of uh, minutes now and then. He played the game. Over the weekend, they look slightly different. When they play Rivaldo Cote, they're different. You look at the back four. So there have been so many things we look at there and we look at all of those teams. And, okay. and I say, you know, we could sit here and try and... I can try and motivate as to why I believe Truta should have taken it over them and right. so forth. We'll have the different dynamics. How over. long is the piece of string? That whole thing of like, we could sit here the whole night. Nice wave. But I guess these are also the times where we have an opportunity to kind of, you know, herald coaches because we know come the end of the season, coach of the season is going to be the guy who wins the league. But these are the opportunities to kind of say, we recognize your good work. We see what you're doing. Hence, Brendan Trutter gets the award. Yes, no, I would have definitely given it to, to Brakis. Um, I don't know why there's any argument. Even if you look at the, the coaching There's personnel. an argument because Sundowns fans are unhappy. That's <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, but now, but now, that's, that's yeah, what I, it is. I understand yeah. that. Yeah. But I mean, Sundowns is sitting with, with three head coaches. Yeah. 
And Brandon is alone. He's sitting with Kamal Saeed, which is long last been in the PSL. Brandon hasn't been in the PSL before. Mm. You, as you rightfully say, yeah. now, I will also hands down give it to somebody that has come now and give it, put in the hard work and has reaped the rewards. Yeah. And it's his first time in the PSL. Kamal Saeed hasn't been there in a while. Uh, his second assistant, uh, Johannes, hasn't been uh, in the PSL. Yeah. Yes, he was the goalkeeper coach at Chippa, if I'm mm. not mistaken. So yeah. many new signings that so have come together. So many new signings. Yeah. They just got promoted. He deserves it. Hands down. Yeah. Um, Sundowns is expected to win. If Sundowns were sitting on 20 points, I'd give it to Sundowns. Sure. But sure. they're sitting on 13. Because we need to understand this. They're sitting on top of the log. But they're not sitting on 20 points where they're supposed to be. Right. They're supposed to be at 20 points. Yeah. Uh, Brandon Truter is supposed to be on 13, 14. He's excelled mm. with, with the amount of points that he's got. So for me, hands down, I would give it to... Case to, closed. To, case, case closed. Shut there down. We you don't have anything <laughs> to add. <laughs> no, I mean, I, I, I mean, I think, I, I think Shoaib took the words right out of, out of my mouth. Because I was about to say the reason why there seems to be this sort of uproar is because Sundowns fans are unhappy because they are sitting top of the log and they think automatically that means, that means our coaches should be the ones receiving the awards. But look at what Brakis has done, yeah. you know, in the, in the short period of time with the squad that he has that was put together in a short time mm -hmm. immediately after the bio bubble. Mm -hmm. He's come in, he's never coached at this level before. His backroom staff's never really been at this level before. Right. You know, you, all those dynamics, you know, you have, you have to reward him. Mm. Because as you say, if Sundowns win the league, even by a point at yeah. the end of the season, the, the coach of the season or coaches He's of the season will, them, will yeah. go to Coach Rulani and Coach Mangova, you sure. know, because they, they, they've won the, the league, league yeah. you know. But in that time, you know, that's why I remember a few years ago there was an uproar about why Fadlu and Luke Amaya when were you know, co candidates for coach of the season mm. when I think it was who had won the league that season. I think it was Sundowns yeah. again, you know. Mm. Uh, but, I mean, imagine what the resources that Maritzburg have, having fought relegation every season until then, yeah. to have Fadlu make them finish fourth mm. on the table with right. the resources that they have, the players that have come from development or whatever. How do you not credit that guy? New award alert. <laughs> Hashtag new award alert. Let's get a new award at the final uh, season awards. Gents, we've run out of time, so I'm going to need to get your predictions for the weekend match between Orlando Pirates and Bloom Celtic, who are obviously up against uh, Rivers United in the next round of the Confed Cup. Congratulations to them for making it through. Uh, and, of course, also the Kaiser Chiefs who've made it through. Um against a team that arrived seven hours before kickoff and <laughs> weren't able to score against them. All, let's put that aside and look towards the weekend. <laughs> who's winning, gents? We're out of time. I need Brian Berg quickly. Who's winning at the weekend? If, if the cell team they played over the weekend shows up, yeah. I believe that they'll probably, they won't make it. They won't make it. But if they, if they play the way they played in, in the run-up to the final, yes. I believe we're going to see a surprise this okay. coming weekend. Sure. I'm going to go with the Lando Pirates quite comfortably. 2-0. 2-0. 2-0. I think it has to be Pirates, otherwise bye-bye Zimbabwe. <laughs> oh, yeah. You're right. There are all sorts of kind of pressures. You think that much pressure? Well, not, 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 maybe not immediately. Yeah. But if he doesn't win this cup, I mean, it's a mountain to climb because then it's the Net Bank Cup in the league and hmm. you've got Sundowns, who I think will probably win it again. Hectic. So there we go. It's a big one at the weekend uh, as far as the two coaches are concerned. For John Maduka, it would be quite a good story, a beautiful story to culminate with a victory in the MTN8. And of course, for Joseph Zimbabwe, it's more of what's expected just in general from being the head coach at Orlando Pirates. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank my panel. Gents, it was good hanging out with you. Good luck on the Twitter streets for the week. And to you at home, thank you for tuning in to Monday Night Football on Soweto TV. From myself and the team behind the scenes, until next time, Shop.